Hey, good morning, everyone. I wanted to share with you a super treat. You've been flipping out over the videos that I've been sharing around autophagy. And I thought, what better way than to sit down with my friend and someone who I have so much respect for that's been truly at the forefront mm -hmm. of autophagy, of intermittent fasting, of resveratrol, of the process of creating optimal health as we age. Dr. Christian, thank you. I appreciate being in your backyard at the University of Florida here. Yeah, I'm very pleased to be here in a nice, lovely setting in the morning. It's gorgeous. And we can talk about the self-devouring process of autophagy, the self-eating of the yeah. cell. And tell us a little <clears throat> bit about, um, you've been studying how we perform at our optimal, you know, for over 20 years, you've been researching and sharing your amazing findings with the world. What got you interested in autophagy? Can you just share with us a little bit about that journey? Yeah, so initially I studied um, antioxidant enzymes and a small peptide called glutathione, which is a very important intracellular uh, antioxidant. And um, I studied this in the context with aging and in muscle and performance of the animals. and. Um, so that got my interest. Of course, um, I had wonderful mentors and I was fortunate to do this work in, at the University of Illinois and University of Wisconsin. And what was it about autophagy? Like where did that sort of come in? Autophagy came in at the University of Florida when I met Bill Dunn. <clears throat> and we did some work with um, exercising animals and caloric restricted animals. And we were one of the first to show that even with exercise, uh, or reducing the calories, this autophagy process is turned on and helps, again, this, the cell to recycle and to repair and become healthier and more resistant against stress. So why, just for the, the viewer, why, why is autophagy so important? Yeah, so as we age or even as we're young, um, proteins and DNA become damaged and they turn over. So we need very healthy proteins and um, peptides and DNA and RNA. And due to a variety of stresses, um, from oxidative stress to glycated stress, uh, reactive nitrogen species, so different forms of stresses can damage uh, those small peptides or proteins. So we need to remove them quickly to get new healthy ones in place of those mm -hmm. so we can optimally you know, function in the cell. For you personally, I mean, you're, I'm obsessed with the way you live your life and I'm always trying to emulate and learn from you. So, you know, I've had the privilege of running stadiums with you in a very different way, but how do you, when you wake up in the morning, how do you think about autophagy in your own body and activating it? Yeah, I, first thing I think is not to go eat immediately and try to move. Now, not, that doesn't mean every day I do that. Yeah. And some days I, I fast and we'll talk about that. So um, this autophagy process gets turned on when you're actually fasting or not uh, eating. Um, so I wait, I try to move. I'm here in a little, my little oasis. I can swim or do some exercises and get going. Maybe drink some uh, tea. Um, some of the compounds in tea can stimulate it even more. And then I think later on about movement and exercise. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, one thing I do. So the exercise, the compounds in the tea, um, and those things for you, you know, you're like, I'm stimulating the autophagy within my body. Absolutely. Yeah. And, um, you know, again, um, on the other, uh, and we need to have periods of, of fasting as well on the days that we're maybe not exercising. Mm -hmm. And one simple way, there's various ways you can do it, is to, um, again, have a very light breakfast, banana, peanut butter sandwich, um, not have lunch, and then have you know, dinner at normal time, six o'clock. Mm -hmm. And again, you, overnight before that, you didn't eat, so you have quickly a period of time of 16 plus hours where yeah. you have a very low uh, caloric intake. Um, during this time, obviously you need to be uh, careful and hydrate and you can have a treat like a piece of chocolate. Nothing wrong with that because some of the compounds in there are also shown yeah. to be beneficial. 
had a piece of chocolate yesterday and, you know, I was born in Switzerland, you're from the Netherlands. And I think, you know, we know, I, my grandmother taught me at a very young age, like have a piece of dark chocolate every day and there are so many good nutrients, compounds in it. Yeah. It's really cool. Um, you know, apicatogens are yeah. in there and uh, flavanols and um, yeah, especially uh, when the body has actually very little during these fasting periods, you take some of those compounds, it stimulates it even more. In fact, one study in the heart, we showed that caloric restriction plus resveratrol is having an effect where caloric restriction alone in the, in the old hearts was not as effective. So as we get old, certain pathways to turn on autophagy, biological pathways, mm. are not optimal and they need a little help from time to time. So combinational, combinational types of therapies and treatments are going to be the future. So interesting that you brought up resveratrol. So it was a decade ago that I read an, I read an article in the local newspaper where Dr. Christian had uh, done a study on resveratrol. And that was the light bulb for me that got me so excited to go down that pathway. And I went to the south of France and I worked with the University of Bordeaux and I really got passionate about all the polyphenols found in the red grape. But tell us about that study mm -hmm. on the sirtuins uh, and resveratrol mm -hmm. and maybe just break it down like to a simple level and why you got interested in resveratrol in the first place. Yeah, so, you know, others have made some remarkable discoveries, uh, like David Sinclair right. on the mechanisms. And before that, there was the French paradox, where people that actually eat a lot of fatty cheese, fatty food, yeah. um, uh, high caloric intake, and they drank wine, they had a lower incidence of cardiovascular disease. So people start thinking about what is it possibly in the wine, I think maybe it's the cheese, you know, <laughs> but uh, it's something in the wine and quickly people found the compound resveratrol and both from uh, long longevity studies in a variety of species from worms, mice and mechanistic studies in cells, they were able to pinpoint that it stimulates sirtuins, which explain, are, explain yeah, what sirtuins are. well sirtuins are a family of proteins uh, and there's many of them that have a wide variety of functions to uh, tell genes to wake up and to activate and make certain protective proteins to further help and protect the cells. So they're central, they're like a master gene of aging um, to uh, keep a cell very healthy and optimizing. But it, again, it's a signaling protein that helps to generate other proteins that are important for health. And some are uh, compounds like um, you know, apicatogen I, I mentioned, resveratrol, vanilla, um, you know, compounds in tea, I'm drinking tea right now, <clears throat> but they can also turn and increase your energy indirectly by making more mitochondria, by turning on another master gene which is PGC1-alpha. Mm. So um, yeah, we want metabolism, we want healthy mitochondria and we want to turn those over as well. And, and repair and remodel those. So by incorporating resveratrol, the epicatechins found in things like dark chocolate, the, the different antioxidants found in the tea, the different compounds, these can all sort of help to switch on and trigger these sirtuins? Absolutely. <clears throat> and again, what I mentioned earlier as well is your biggest um, interventions still are gonna be exercise and caloric deprivation from time mm -hmm. to time mm -hmm. um, in combination with those yeah. uh, I think is, is optimal. So both nutrition, life, lifestyle changes are going to be critical to, to optimize this process. Exercise. Tell us a little bit about what exercise means to you and how we can simply incorporate it. Yeah, so you saw my gym earlier. Yes. There's no so equipment. It's a, it's a play gym that <laughs> your daughter shares with you, right? Yeah. It's very cool. I like I like this idea of it not being like a strict, structured. structured yeah, I'm not a favor in favor of structured. I bike mm. to work. Yeah. So normal daily activities, walking, biking, playing, gardening, those are going to be again in my my belief yeah. your foundation. And then in addition, 
<clears throat> some strength training. Now I get some strength training with my daughter because we do a lot of, um, you know, balance and yeah. uh, we play around a lot. That's really exciting and good news, you know, for, for everybody to think of it where we just move in our day and we play and we're it's critical, physical. critical. Yeah. And, you know, we are modern humans and uh, this is a, a good and a bad thing. We have a lot of conveniences of, mm -hmm. of uh, daily life. We sit in front of computers. That's what I mean with the modern, modern human. They're very inactive during the day. So it's important during the day to find breaks uh, to stimulate mm -hmm. metabolism. Again, we didn't talk much about um, the overall goal is to motivate and stimulate metabolism mm -hmm. at the right time. Um, of course, we talked about exercise and, and, and restriction of, of uh, calories, but right. if you're exercising a lot, sure, you need to eat. And I, I love food. I eat a lot, don't yeah. get me wrong. So you have to have that balance. We talked a little earlier about circadian biology mm. and circadian rhythms and right. you want to keep those very uh, balanced as well because they will help autophagy and if you disrupt that autophagy won't work and what is this circadian biology is uh, we have clocks and there's some very famous professors here at the University of Florida like yeah. Karen Esser who's studying this um, and um, you don't want to disrupt those clocks and how can you make sure you don't disrupt them again uh, regular, being very um, rigorous in when you go to bed, when you eat, and when you move. And um, you need to keep that in tune as well. So that helps metabolism. The circadian rhythms and, and um, you know, I understood that every single cell in our body, just like every single cell has, has the ability to activate or deactivate autophagy, it also has a little clock within it yeah. and the 2017 no Nobel Prize was in circadian rhythms. Yeah, it's an absolutely, yeah. you know, hot topic yeah. um, totally. and it makes total sense mm -hmm. and, um, you know, they're finding, you know, everything, plants, really? anything has clocks and it responds to light. Yeah. And again, we talked earlier about light. It's important to Which wake up right and now. get it, get a good pattern of light. People are afraid for light, but we need light yeah. to live and yeah. to keep the clock in balance. So it's important to go outside uh, and, and move there as well yeah. and, and get exposure. I, I have, um, you know, very strong feelings on the benefit of, of light and us being in the sun and um, just curious for you, how much time do you spend in the sun and are you putting things like sunscreen on or are you letting your body <clears throat> Absolutely. I put sunscreen on. Um, my wife is very good about this and um, I, um, I think about 15-20 years ago I yeah. made sure I was better protective. I wear a long sleeve shirt. Yeah. But it's okay for 20-30 minutes to take, to take a shirt off and yeah. get some exposure uh, with some sunscreen. Uh, but I think, uh, yeah, light is, is critical and, uh, you know, if people don't get exposure, that's going to be not only vitamin D, and, but it, it's going to have more effects on the cell, which has to do with circadian biology, which can then affect autophagy as well. It's so cool. Dr. Christian, I, um, for me, it's an honor to be able to come over to your house in the morning on the way to work. You're, you're flying off to Dubai today, a world-renowned expert. You've dedicated your life really to the biology of aging. You work at the Aging Institute. And um, to be able to have the privilege to, to pick your brain for a couple minutes this morning is just, it's like a dream come true. It's like a dream come true. And I, yeah. I truly can't thank you enough. Thank you. And you know, my goal is to optimize, like we discussed earlier, um, everybody's uh, maximum potential yeah. uh, at every decade and optimize uh, our health span and our performance. It doesn't matter how old you are. Um, it's very important for me to help with that and to give people information on the basic science side to optimize this. Well, you're incredible. And again, thank you so much for the opportunity to learn. Thank you, Naomi. It's a great pleasure.